What's going on smart people? Today I am bringing you another math video and hopefully showing you a new method of integration that you might not have seen before. This method is called tabular integration, sometimes known as tic-tac-toe method, especially if you've seen the movie Stand and Deliver, as this is the method that Edward James almost uses in the movie. Now the way this video is going to go is we're going to carry out an integral using integration by parts and it's going to be long and kind of boring and then we're going to use the shortcut method known as tabular integration. So I'm sure someone in the comments will add a little timestamp to show when the actual tabular integration starts but for now let's go ahead and carry through with integration by parts. So I thought it would be fun to actually do the integral that they do in the movie so we're going to be integrating x squared sine of x dx. And we're not going to put limits of integration on this because this is an odd function. We'd have to choose a non-symmetric interval just to make sure that this doesn't go to zero because that would be f***ing boring. Um, um, but anyways, let's just carry out with this integral as if we were using integration by parts. So the first thing that we would do is we would have to define our u and our dv. For those of you who might not remember, if we can write an integral as u dv, then that integral becomes uv minus the integral of v du. This is integration by parts. Cool. So we just have to define what our u is in this integral and what our dv will be. We're going to call, and this is the mistake that the person made in uh, Stand and Deliver. I don't remember his name at the moment. But he let u equal sine of x. But the trick that we're going to have to use, and it's actually going to apply to our tabular integration as well, is you always let u be the thing that can be differentiated to zero if possible. Meaning, if you were to take the derivative of the derivative and so forth, eventually you would get zero. So naturally that's going to be x squared. And then we're going to let dv equal sine of x dx. So then du, well the derivative of x squared is just 2x dx. And then v, because we're going to go from dv to v, is going to be the integral of sine of x dx, which is just going to be minus cosine of x. Cool. Now we can use the actual integration by parts formula. So it's just going to be uv minus v du. So it's going to be, let me write integration by parts up here real quick. Okay, so if we just pattern match here, what we get is that this is equal to x squared uh, minus x squared cosine x minus the integral of v du. So minus cosine x times 2x dx. Okay, we can bring out the 2 and the negative 1 outside of the integral because that's just a constant. And when we do that, this negative cancels with this, so this just becomes positive. 2 comes out, and I'm just going to factor out that 2 out here. So this is just going to be the integral of cosine of x times x dx. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually end up having to do integration by parts again. Uh, the, th the theme for whenever you have just some power of x times like sine of x or e to the x, log of x, something like that, is uh, the power tells you how many times you're going to have to use integration by parts. Um, so let's see here. So right now we're going to have to do integration by parts again. So let's call this one, let's just use the same one. I think we're smart enough to not get confused with these. So we're going to let u equal x dv equal uh, cosine x dx. You still see that? Yes, you can. Okay. Then du is just dx, because the derivative of x is just 1. And that would normally be du dx, the dx gets multiplied over. And then the integral of dv is v. This is just going to give us, and uh, no, that's right, uh, a sine of x. Great. Now we're just going to do the same thing for this integral. So once we write out, I'm just going to write out this term one more time, so this is going to come out to x squared cosine of x plus 2, and then this is going to be uv minus v du. Well, uv is just going to be x sine x. Minus the integral 
of v du. So that's going to be sine of x dx. Once all the dust settles, this gives us a minus x squared cosine x plus 2x sine x uh, minus cosine of x. There we have it. After using integration by parts two times, we finally have the answer. And actually, before we go any further, if you notice here, this 2 was not distributed to this integral, so this should actually be minus 2 cosine x. Sorry for the confusion, so this is minus 2 cosine x. Great. Now that that's all said and done, let's get into tabular integration. And the way to set up the tabular integration is we're going to, wait, ready for this? We're going to set up a table, go figure. And the table is going to have two columns. The left column is always going to be the term that we're continuously differentiating. And the right column is going to correspond to the term that we're going to be integrating. Now, the thing that we're going to differentiate is always going to be something that we can differentiate to zero at some point. Meaning, since we're interested in the integral of x squared sine of x dx, x squared is something we can differentiate to zero, right? We have x squared, der derivative of that is just 2x, derivative of that is just 2, and zero. There we have it. On the right-hand side, we're going to be integrating what's left over. So that means we're going to be integrating sine of x with respect to x. And we're going to integrate this as many times as we took derivatives of x squared. So the integral of this is just going to give us a minus cosine x. Integral of minus cosine x is going to be minus sine x. And then we have another minus, but this is just going to be a regular cosine x. So to reiterate, we're just taking integrals of these. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to look at the diagonals here. We're going to group this with one over from this, one down and one over from this, this with one down and one over from this, and this two with the cosine x. And it's going to be the pattern, sort of the reason why this is sometimes called tic-tac-toe method, is this is going to go plus, minus, plus, and so on. If this was an x cubed, it would keep going minus, plus, and so on. Okay, and what this plus, minus, plus corresponds to is we're going to be taking positive uh, 1, so 1 times um, minus x squared cosine x, so we're taking minus x squared cosine x. It'll make more sense after the following terms. Minus this next term, so minus minus 2x sine x plus 2 cosine x. So it, it almost doesn't really make sense on the first one because it's plus there. I just like to think of it as multiplying by positive 1, which doesn't really do anything. It just means you're taking the first term. Subtracting this second diagonal. So minus minus 2x sine x plus 2 cosine x. And once all the dust settles, we get minus x squared cosine x plus 2x sine x plus 2 cosine x. And that's the same answer we got going through all of the trouble of doing integration by parts twice. And the reason I said that this is just integration by parts sort of packaged a little bit differently is because this is our u and this is our dv, which means that this is just uv minus v du, or the integral of v du, and so on and so forth. So the, the minus cancels with the next iteration of integration by parts and gives us a plus. That's why it alternates signs every other sign. So though we can see that this is pretty much just a different representation of integration by parts, it's sort of like instead of brute forcing your way down a mountain, you're just skiing from one slope to the other by recognizing that you know, we're just differentiating the same thing over and over again, integrating, and then taking the diagonal components, and then we just get to the same answer a good amount faster. One of the limitations of tabular integration is that it really is only helpful if you can have one term that differentiates to zero. Uh, so if you can't do that, then it probably won't work. But my general rule of thumb is try tabular integration. If it doesn't work, then that only took like 10 seconds anyways.
But anyways, I hope you guys found this video interesting or at least a little bit helpful. Let me know in the comments section if you want me to try to find more interesting ways to take integrals. Let me know, and I'll see you guys there. And thanks for letting me teach you calculus. I hope that wasn't offensive.